and the title of this session, Are We Ready for a New World Order? What's good, maestros? Back with another video. No, you know, see me carry the Chris and Dad and on this and Dad, we think official, yeah. The girl I blow all when the air condition, and yeah, yeah. We just want to listen closely to that one, yeah. We'll get right into it. Kelly, this is moving very slowly, but it is potentially the biggest change to money since, I don't know, currency con consolidation after the Civil War. So we're watching it very carefully. Yeah. As I said, we're not going to want to listen closely. You see me? It's have to do with something where everyone I want to love. You see me? The green, the moolah, the dollars. You see me? So let's listen. Yeah, a huge step for mankind. See Why would anyone pay $69 million for a JPEG and a Hyperloop? NFTs, metaverse. Remember those words. Cryptocurrency, electric vehicles. Well, the organizers here are nothing if not ambitious. This is, I think you will agree, a daunting subject for discussion at just after 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning here in the relative calm of Expo 2020. But tackle it. We must, because I believe what is clear is that we have hit an inflection point. We are certainly living in a unique age of uncertainty and volatility in global affairs. Basically what that means is times are changes. Times are changing. So if you're not prepared to change with the time, you will be left behind. Keep listening. Looks like the grim cloud of fascism is spreading over the whole world, inexorable. Well, that was 9th February 1939. Hey, I haven't changed my opinion since. Hey, he's it's on the just brink of death. gotten worse. This year is on pace to set a record for ice melt here in the Arctic. This warming is enough to bring about the raft of effects we call climate change. Our hosts for this essential summit understand that it's only through international cooperation that we can reverse the devastation caused by man-made climate change. Under Trump, they abandoned minutes, moved to seconds, 100 seconds to midnight. That's where it is now. Because the threats are accumulating. We're approaching the most dangerous point in human history. Nothing like it before. We are now facing the prospect of destruction of organized human life on Earth from environmental destruction and not in the remote future. We are approaching irreversible turning, turning points which cannot be dealt with any longer. I don't think we're going to see a period of depression unless the virus takes a real turn for the worse. Your Excellency, are you ready for a new world order? And so I think we have to go deeper, and it's not about the U.S. versus China. It's about what underpin. You see, you heard that phrase on my page before, new world order. Pay attention. A world order is always the financial system. Hmm. I, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when... Order. Finance, money. Once you control the money, you control the world. All right. And they came off the gold standard in 71, and so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is to absolutely everything else. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. And the new one, the new accounting, is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having a 
almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. Put simply, blockchain is a permanent record of transactions linked in order or a chain to act as a timeline or ledger. And in Bitcoin's case, it's purposely decentralized. Central bank digital currencies can be blockchain based or not, depending on the design. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital constitution of human rights if we're going to have digital money. Uh, but also, this new money will be sovereign in nature. Most people think that digital money is crypto and private, but uh, what I see are superpowers introducing digital currency. The Chinese were the first. The U.S. is on the brink, I think, of moving in the same direction. The Europeans have committed to that as well. And the question is, will that new system of digital money and digital accounting accommodate the competing needs of the citizens of all these locations so that every human being has a chance to have a better life. Because that's the only measure of whether a world order really serves. But these cautious institutions are now buzzing with talk of a revolutionary concept, a form of money you cannot see, central bank digital currencies. Don't come to any particular conclusion about it, but they say it could offer the, uh, the general public a risk-free digital money that is free from credit risk, free from liquidity risk, would not replace existing digital money, but would be an addition to Surveillance it. Surveillance and privacy issues could arise if the central bank is able to monitor every transaction. You know, it is being implemented across the world. China's experiment is very large scale. When the world arrives in Beijing next winter for the Winter Olympics, uh, they are going to be using the new ch digital RMB to shop and, and to stay in hotels and, and buy meals in restaurants. The world is going to see a functioning CBDC very soon, uh, within the coming year. Well, so far, Visa and MasterCard are already uh, offering central banks uh, around the world that have uh, goals or ambitions of moving into a, a central bank uh, currency to use their infrastructure to be able to do it. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a realization that uh, that is the direction we're, we're heading in. Unlike your savings in a commercial bank, which rely on the bank's promise to fulfill, CBDCs are recognized by law and backed by the power of the central bank, which cannot go bankrupt. For example, if a commercial bank collapses, part of your savings could potentially be wiped out. But this wouldn't be the case for CBDCs, which could be as trusted as cash, as convenient as a payment app, yet also benefit from the same blockchain technology which underpins cryptocurrencies. And just like cash, CBDCs could be distributed through commercial banks, avoiding too much disruption to the financial system or the central bank having to deal directly with many millions of citizens and businesses. In order to participate in Beijing, the Chinese government is requiring everyone to download an app called My2022. Athletes, journalists, spectators, everyone there must put this app on their phone. What is China's goal as it rolls this digital currency out during the games? Well, you've got to remember that uh, cryptocurrencies uh, pose a threat to the ability of any country to control its monetary policy and therefore its financial system. And these uh, central bank currency, especially the one in China, is sort of an attempt to, to offset that risk. And I think that uh, I think it's a good idea for any central bank to develop one. And certainly China is the most advanced uh, in this area so far, having started this uh, project as early as 2014. As you see, there's a lot of information that needs to be taken into consideration. You see that with the new change in finances and the new policies that they're going to use for money, you see that pay for money is no longer going to be as essential as digital money, right? So digital money is the new wave of money. Digital money basically gives you the access to have control of your own money. When, you, when your money is in a bank, your money is being controlled and everything is under their access. You don't have full access or control of your money. The bank can go into bankruptcy and that can still put your money in jeopardy, you understand? And that makes your money or wealth accumulated over the years go down. But with CBD or cryptocurrency or digital funds, you still have control of your money in every aspect. 
with the blockchain or the security that's maintained over the system that's created over the blockchain. All right. So I just wanted to do a little bit more research, as we say. This is just a learning process that we're going through. And if if you know like videos like this, we can bring more information like this because, as we say, this is the new wave. This is what this is what the future holds. As you see, metaverse and stuff like that. I want to know what a movie near Ready Player One. You see that movie? That movie is wow! It's so real. They don't even understand. People literally go there and walk around with goggles on their face 24/7. That's what that's what I see for the vision at least. As well as electric cars and stuff like that. People think that gas is gonna be there forever. No, that's not the case. Gas is going. We've been on this earth for all long now. We've been using gas for all long now. Yes, it, it will run it run out eventually. So things will be changing. We're gonna go fully electric, right? Fully solar power, right? Stuff like that. So leave it us open up your mindset. Think about things a little bit different, and don't try to limit yourself, right? So we know there's a lot of people out there who watch these kind of videos and understand the concept and the changes that's going to be taking place very very soon but I'm hoping to enjoy this video it's been your boy Maestro we'll be back with more videos like this and we'll see you on the next